One of the reasons I created this channel, Talking True, is because I wanted to have conversations with people who were having authentic awakenings and who were doing their best to live true to their own higher self and their own highest purpose. I also wanted to tackle some of the challenges that come up on the spiritual path and during the spiritual journey. And I wanted to highlight some of the things that seekers struggle with. So in today's episode of Talking True, I'm diving into a meaty topic that comes up quite often um, in messages and emails I get from people. And that is to do with the ego and egoic death or the death of the ego. You know, what is that? What does that look like? Is it harmful? Can you still function after an egoic death or the death of an, the ego? And I asked Morgan Smith to join me today and he and I are going to take a close look at what that is all about. So don't go anywhere, stay right here and join us on Talking True. So welcome to Talking True, Morgan. You've been on the show, I think, two or three times now. And uh, times, it's three times. Three so, times. yeah. So it's really great to have you here with us today. I'm looking okay. forward to diving in <laughs> um, to the theme of ego. You know, what is the ego? What is ego death? Um, which I think is a great topic because many spiritual seekers often stumble over that and um, are not sure what it is. And it also seems to generate quite a bit of fear. So if you like, I can get started with something that happened recently. Oh. I, I recently had an email from someone and I'll, I'll give you the broad overview. I haven't got the email with me, but I'll give you the broad overview. This man had watched some of my videos. He's read some of my books as well. And he said that um, he was, he's been a spiritual seeker for the last 10 years and he's been doing all the practices, but he recognizes that one of the stumbling blocks in his practice, especially with respect to meditation, is that when he dives deep into the silence, he becomes scared because he says he's afraid that if his ego dies, he won't be able to function in the world because he really believes that you need, you know, a strong ego to be able to deal with, um, with working life and responsibilities and relationships and so on and so forth. So he said that he knows that, he realizes that that's really what holds him back. He puts the brakes on just at the point where there's kind of a pull or an invitation to go deep, you know, deep into the silence or into source itself or however you want to to um describe that so you know my response to him was well you know you are in good company because that i think is a common theme and it happens quite a bit because there is this belief that you know because of this, this identification with being the story and needing the ego and you can't function or make decisions if the ego isn't in place um, that really does um, act as a stumbling block. So what I did was I offered him a very simple kind of practice to look at. Um, and I said to him, when you wake up in the morning and, you know, you're just coming into waking and you have to go, get up and go use the restroom or make coffee, you know, or let the dog out or whatever you need to do. <laughs> Do you notice that your mind is really, really, really still? There's no movement. You're just doing everything um, in accordance to what you, you know, know to do. And he said, yes, his mind is really, really still. And it doesn't usually start to kick in until he's had his first cup of coffee. And then I said, so do you feel, do you believe that you need your mind to be active and saying to you, okay, get the coffee, now do this, now get the dog, does that need does that ongoing narrative that voice in your head need to be in place and does it need to keep going for you to be able to do those things and his response was no and he says oh my god I never 
saw it like that before. He said there are many times during the day, and even when he's working, where his mind's completely still, and he contributes that to meditation. And he realizes that he can still function <laughs> and still respond if somebody calls his name, even when his mind isn't active. So I said, well, you are your own proof <laughs> that... Um, you know, the mind doesn't be, need to be engaged. And of course, it's the mind and everything, the content of the mind, the psyche and everything, and the belief systems and conditioning that make up the ego. So that, that was how I would put it. You may phrase it differently, but um, I think that's a great place to start. What I tell my clients and uh, those who, uh, who um, have messaged me through social media, uh, in regards to ego, uh, sometimes people are talking about different things. Um, in the case that you brought up to this uh, to this gentleman here, it sounds it sounds to me that um, um, we're talking about the the racing mind, the things that comes up within the mind, the thoughts, uh, the beliefs, the fears, the anticipation, uh, and to me those are the the functions of ego. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that happen because you can't navigate the world without having an ego meaning sense of self so mm -hmm. ego means depends on who you look at some will say ego means false self meaning if they're talking from a mystical standpoint that the false self self is the thing within ourselves that we believe to, to be real so some may call that the false self some may call that the self meaning sense of self so when you wake up in the morning you realize there's a sense of self there um, you realize that sense of self has always been there and that sense of self is attached to certain things like I am a father, I'm a teacher, I'm an uncle, I am black, I am white, um, this is my ethnicity, and on and on and on, this is my culture, these are my beliefs. So these are the things that ego are attached to. So when people are talking about ego, um, based on what I know, when people are talking about ego, sometimes when they're talking about um, ego death, they're talking about egoic, the letting go of the egoic stuff. Um, and that's a thing too, learning to let go of the egoic, egoic stuff in regards not not to be attached to them. So even though they may arise, um, the witness, the stillness sees that that's what's happening. It doesn't really get involved in it. It just watches, right? But these things happen because that's that's the human nature. These things arise. You watch them come. They they haunt you a little bit and then they go. And this this is a constant thing. It continues to happen over and over and over again. But as long as that, that stillness, that stillness mind is there and is watching as, as, the, as the, 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 the empty witness. It's not disturbed by any of those things. It just realizes that, ha, that's just part of the story. So, so now when someone's talking about ego death, the problem is, uh, if we're addressing actual ego death, some people believe that an actual ego death is a permanent thing. When an actual, when a full ego death is really a temporary thing, it's just, it's another state that that could happen, and of, course, and of course, the word death is what throws people off, because people look at death as being permanent. But I look at death as in the same way as if you look, if you go to the story of Jesus, where Jesus died on the cross and he was uh, re re resurrected, so it's the same thing. So when someone goes to an actual ego death, which is means which means the death of the sense of self, it dies. Uh, it's like a, it's like a biological death, but it's a, only a psychological death. It's not a biological death. It dies, and it has to die because when it dies, you're able to experience what you actually are. When the ego has uh, dissolved into consciousness with a capital C, um, or when there's no distinction between ego and outside of ego, and you realize that everything there are no distinctions, and everything is 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 one thing, and that becomes a non-dual experience. But you can't have that non-dual ex experience to that degree at a peak experience level if there's still ego there. So the ego dies. It just it's just a term saying that it's uh, it's offline. It experiences you now experience what you actually are, and at some point you come back online again. But when you come back online again, if it's a spiritual, genuine spiritual awakening, when you come back, the ego will be softened. So there's still being ego there, and, and and when I say ego in this case, I mean the sense of self. Sense of self comes back online, but the sense of self, when it comes back online, it's no longer the same as it was before, as it was prior. So now we're yeah. softening up the ego. And that's yes. 
in regards to when people are talking about ego death. So ego death is not a permanent thing. When you have an ego death, you don't stay that way because you have to come back. And when you come back, and just like when they say before enlightenment, chop would carry water. After enlightenment, chop would carry water. Everything still continues when you come back. But there's a difference in regards to the, 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 the sense of self, um, the empty witness that's watching the sense of self and all the stuff that arises that the mind is, is, is programmed and designed to do. And you're not, you're no longer disturbed by it. And you're no longer as attached to it. And that's what makes the difference in regards to ego. Yes. That's, why that's beautifully put because from my own direct experience, after I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I was having out of body experiences, lucid dream, yeah. you know, things. Um, and then, yeah. And then after, after I had the radical awakening in 1989, I honestly, the only way I can put it is that I felt like a ghost because um, I be, I saw in that in that initiation and you know afterwards that I had never been my thoughts. I wasn't my body, I wasn't my emotions, I wasn't my conditioning and all of those things. And of course it takes time to for that to, to be integrated. At the same time, I was having lucid dreams where I'd be walking past a storefront and I'd be looking in, you know, in the, in the window. And, you know, sometimes you see a reflection in the mirror, in the glass, right? Mm -hmm. And there'd be nothing there. Or I'd look into a mirror and there was no reflection looking back at me. And then as I was going around um, the island and, you know, going to the bank and dealing with business and stuff like that, I often felt like I was a walking ghost and mm -hmm. I there was no one there. And it was such a weird experience but it yeah. felt absolutely natural and normal and um and you know it didn't feel like it was something to be frightened of yeah. and I still obviously respond to my name I still did what I was you know having to do and all of that but there was a definite and I guess this comes with loss loss of the ego and the identification yeah. with the story and all of those things there was a definite phase that that I really felt like this ghost-like kind of form that was being moved by a greater power and that continued for yeah for quite some time and and it would show up in dreams and so on and so forth and and sometimes i'd go to the bank for example or i go into a store and i'd be standing there waiting to be you know served and it was like i wasn't there there was somebody, there. Yeah, there was somebody else <laughs> and i'd be and ignored. watching the body move and doing all the interactions and everything and there's something behind it that's watching the whole thing go down. And it's like, wow, my hands, everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Yet I'm not the one in control. At least that part of the self realized it, it's a it's a interesting experience. <laughs> and then of course, after the awakening, I just thought, oh wow, there's nothing, you know, all the decisions we think we make. You know, we're the one in charge and we're the one in control and we made yeah. this decision to do that and whatever it is, whether it's go study for something or take a job somewhere or move, um, all of that was being guided. Where we were being guided, the form was being guided for the, from this from source itself. And um, and of course that continues after ego death. Um, but there's a it there's a much clearer seeing much clearer that, seeing. Yeah. yeah that it is happening of its own accord and thing you know life just kind of unfolds in the way it is meant to unfold and you just flow with it more there's less resistance there's less resistance yeah and of course when someone has quote-unquote ego death um, it's different for everyone. Um, in my situation, I had a full blown, uh, uh, um, extraordinary, uh, peak experience of an ego death where you can literally say, I thought I was actually dead. That's not my thought in the moment, but that's my thought post the event. So I was like, I was actually dead because in my experience, um, and I had many experiences like this, but, um, I shouldn't say many, but there was, um, uh, various experiences like that where I saw the bright light and then as I ent was entering the bright light I merged with the light and I became one with the light and then the light became this ocean of consciousness and then the ocean of consciousness turned into the absolute the absolute the absolute 
So I had no um, idea of me being Morgan or anything like that. Or I could say it included Morgan. Um, and so when all that happened and then my ego started to come back online, then all that stuff that you're talking about took place. Um, and there's other people I talked to where they didn't have that huge. It was just gradual. And then there was a loss of the ego, like what you're speaking of there. And there was a loss of an ego and they realized when they looked at their hands and looked at looked in the mirror, it's not, you're not recognizing the reflection coming back at you or not seeing a reflection at all. But it's like you're looking in the mirror and you're asking yourself, who's this person in the mirror? Yeah. <laughs> I yes. never had experience. I've never looked in the mirror and 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 thought that. Um, mm -hmm. but I've had experiences where I remember after this was in 2015, 2015. Uh, one afternoon, I had a spiritual, another spiritual type of awakening. And when I came back into my, when I came back to myself, I realized that I wasn't myself. And I remember leaving the house and I was walking to work. And as I was walking, I watched my body make all the stops. So I stopped at the stoplight, everything on its own accord without my conscious thought. And I just watched it all happen. I went to the school that I was working at. And uh, I went and spoke to the school principal. I talked to all the staff, but it wasn't me talking to the principal or to the staff. My physical body and everything was doing what it needed to do, but I wasn't in the body. <laughs> it, was, it was something that just watched it all happen. Uh, and it, it gradually faded by the end of the shift. It gradually faded and I was back in my body. But I always thought about, wow, that was very interesting. And how I, it, what threw me is how I made all those stops. At every stoplight, didn't get hit by a vehicle. None of those things happened. I just, I, I did all the things I needed to do, without, without fail, and I wasn't the one in control. Yes, I've had similar experiences with respect to driving. You know, where I've finished a really busy day at work, get in the car and start to drive, and as I'm pulling off to drive, you know, drive away, I, I drop into this sort of profound. It's as if. The mind's been busy, so busy all day, you know, when when the, when it, the day's ended, yeah. my mind would become completely still drop, drop into the heart. And then I drive home in complete stillness. And then I get home and I think, gosh, you know, the mind, my mind would sometimes kick in. I think, how did, you know, how is that even possible that I could drive home yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and be able to do it so easily and um of course it's the supreme self or source itself or whatever you want to call it that is coming into the forefront in those situations and interestingly i've also had dreams lucid dreams where i felt like i was dying and i'd leave my body and you know i'd go off into this other realm an astral realm and then i'd be told it, and it was it's kind of like a near-death experience i'd be told it wasn't my time i had to come back oh and that happened many 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 times oh. and um i would often feel disappointment because <laughs> I, you know i, I just the, the overwhelming, yes the overwhelming yeah. love and the feelings of expansion and being my true self so to speak mm -hmm. um was just so incredible and and you know when you hear near-death experiences stories about you know what happened to them it's the same thing and that that used to happen quite a bit um okay. yeah i think at least three or four or five times maybe i mean i remember on one occasion i lay down and put my hands across my chest like this because I was absolutely convinced I wasn't I was going to die because I wasn't fit I was I was sick as well I had like a really bad fluey thing or whatever it was and I lay down like this because I thought I was going to die and and I was repeating the mantra and then I left my body and went was like plummeting through time and space and heading towards this light and then I got there and I saw this sort of classic you know gates into heaven or whatever it looked like yeah and the gates oh, opened and i was going to go in and then um there were, i heard a voice this very loud voice and the voice said who are you and i said i am your child father nothing more nothing less and then he said you have to go back hmm. and um and you know when i use the Term father, 
masculine it's masculine but it was but it was both masculine and feminine I think I was speaking from my kind of my um original kind of religious upbringing place <laughs> usually people will see um the image that's uh, that is uh, associated with the the faith or the religion that they were brought up in uh, so that makes perfect sense so like in your case you would have seen all that uh and mm -hmm. someone who's Hindu they may have seen something different but it, it's totally understandable it makes sense Yes, yes. So anyway, I, I was I was pulled back, pulled back to my body, and was I woke up and thought, oh, no, Not really, Damn. really, <laughs> yeah, oh, shit. I almost got in. We're Seriously. trying to get into that club, and the bouncer figures out that you don't have, um, you know, the proper attire, or you don't have a, an actual admission to get in, um, uh, to get into the into the club. So, so it sounds like yeah. a good idea. Thank yes, you, stop you in your tracks. Yes, so. Um, <laughs> You know, and I have had experiences with Jesus, and but also with great beings from uh, different traditions as well. But um, you know, it, all of this, everything that we're speaking to, speaks and direct and directly links to um, the e egoic death, which, as you said, isn't the same because it's there's not that finality. Because obviously, if you're in the body and you're functioning, you have to go to work and so on and so forth. Well, there has to be. Yeah, but but there isn't the same attachment or identification. Yeah, start to let go of the attachments. The attachments may still be there, but they're not as attached as they were prior to that uh, particular um, death. Uh, and, you, and you just keep going. So there's nothing for anyone to fear in regards to: Am I gonna? Is my ego going to die? And the ego will tell you those things because it doesn't want to die, right? So it'll do everything in its power to stop you from doing it, even if it means uh, distracting you or whatever it needs to do, uh, not not making you go deep into your meditation or um, you change your intentions, all that stuff. Your ego will do anything it can to not go through that. But it's, it's totally okay. And sometimes for some people, depending on their belief systems, they may be uh, presented with uh, an entity that will tell you why you shouldn't allow the ego to die because you will go insane. This would, would ha This would happen to me. I was I was having a mystical experience, and um, this uh, a devil, like a chocolate devil, came in front of me. It it confronted me a few times in in different uh, situations, and this time it came and it said, "Stop what you're doing. Stop the search. Stop the stop everything that you're doing. Because if you if you continue further, you will go insane." And I didn't listen to the to this chocolate devil. I just kept going, it kept going, and kept going, and eventually, what I needed to happen happened. So um, I I so I I see that as a manifestation of my ego trying to get me to stop because of course I didn't want to die but um because i had good teachers i continued to pursue and um do what i needed to do and i ignored the the, the warning of that chocolate devil so <laughs> in the yogic tradition um the there's great teachings about the ego and 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 one of those teaching it's teachings is that when we come into the into this world when we're born we continuously as soon as our ego forms you know when we're around what is it three or four or something like that yeah. we're continually then trying to find god when we come first a firstborn we're still in that sort of unitive space we're one with god that's why we love to hold babies babies feel so good right because they're still in that space there's been no separation and then you know when you get to four or five or however three or four however old it is um the ego forms and from that point on we're we suffer because we're looking for we're looking for god we're looking constantly looking for what we uh, feel disconnected from Mm -hmm. And they call it, they, the yogis call it the anatha mala, which is identification with the, with the ego or with the small self. Mm -hmm. And um, they say that when you have a, a, an awakening, whether it's radical or subtle, the anatha mala is destroyed, completely, completely separates. And that I'm absolutely certain is what happened in my case, uh, you know, when I received initiation in a lucid dream. I could mm -hmm. feel it was like everything fell down. But it took time. I think it takes time. And I think that could be true for in most cases, actually. There's this separation. But then I think it takes time for that to be integrated or to be processed or however you want to 
term that, right? Yeah. And then to start to see in your everyday waking life that who you had been taught to believe you were isn't actually true. And for some people that can be like lit almost instantaneous. Yeah, for, some people. for other people it can take a long time. Yeah. Because for some people it has to be gradual because the psyche cannot handle that inst that instant uh, um, uh, realization. So for some people, for many people, it may be gradual. Uh, but yeah, you have the odd person where it's just it's just like that for whatever yeah. reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> times of 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, realization, or you know, it could be a number of things. Uh, but some people are able just to let go just like that, where the other the other group of people has to happen gradually. And it and it does what it needs to do based on the the, the genetics or the psychological um, uh, design of the of that individual. So whatever it's needed, because in these cases time doesn't mean anything. So if it takes if it takes a long time or happens in a short time, from the standpoint of grand of all being, it's all the same. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's wonderful it's, unfolding. It it really is. It's just such a mystery the way it works and how it's always so different for everybody. There's no two stories that are the same, right? No. It's just... <laughs> um, yeah, if you keep hearing uh, all these stories, uh, they're so different from each other. And there's no even point saying, well, how comes I didn't get that? Well, maybe it wasn't meant for you to have that. Just uh, focus on what will unfold for you. Yes, yeah. yeah. But so, certainly, you know, coming back to the to ego or egoic death, or however you want to term it um you know I, I, you know what, to me those those can be two different things so mm -hmm. uh, one can have an ego death and one can have an egoic death right where you're you're now letting go of all the egoic stuff and all that stuff comes to a standpoint and there's nothing left except for maybe just the ego in its bare in this bare nakedness yes or you can also be an ego death where there's actually um the shutdown the full shutdown of the the sense of self uh it's just i don't i haven't heard anyone um, labeled it that way in terms of an egoic that that versus an ego death but mm -hmm. that would be something i probably will write a blog on a blog post on that one day in, in, in regards to the distinction at least how i see the distinction of the two because both of them are valid it's just a matter yeah. of what people are talking about so when someone says i had an ego death and they explain an egoic unfolding and in my mind i'm like well that's not an ego death yet but it's an ego unfolding it's the the stripping away of the layers uh, of, of the egoic stuff that's attached to what we call ego um, as opposed to when you hear these stories, uh, and especially in my case, this full yes, nothing left. Um, but th that's my that's my story. But I hear other people that never had that. But the a lot of people talk about that egoic unfolding of all the different layers of ego, and you do feel like you're dying. Because I've had cases of that too, where um, there was a point where I wanted to start writing letters and calling everyone, just saying, "Hey." If anything happens to me, I hope that you're okay. And I, I got to, I went to that period because I really felt like I was dying, right? And of course, that didn't happen. But it was a moment of uh, two or three weeks where I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it past three weeks. Something, I feel something in my heart that I'm going to die, and that just could be some of the the egoic um, um, uh, unfolding of uh, of that particular part of the self. So it's very interesting in how it happens. It's kind of scary at the time, not scary in the sense I was peaceful. But it was just, it, it kind of, I start to miss certain people, even though I wasn't gone yet. <laughs> I was preparing myself for all that, um, the, the moment where I have to let everything go. Um, but then something happened and that went away. I was like, oh gosh, that was an interesting <laughs> experience I went through went to for the last two or three weeks. Um, it, yeah, it could be different for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, uh, you know that what you, what's what's coming to my mind as well is that I re clearly remember when I was very 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 young, I used to set, tell people that I wasn't going to live beyond the age of thirty three. I was absolutely convinced I was gonna I wasn't gonna be here anymore. Well, and why that, that was that because of like Jesus Christ. I I didn't. I thirty three. That's interesting. I, I, I didn't have any frame of reference, but what happened mm. was, um, you know, and that continued all, all through when I was a teenager and, you know, I, I, in my 20s. But then when I received Shaktipat initiation in the lucid dream, I was 33. So Whoa. it was. That, that makes was perfect sense. 
And um, I'd completely forgotten all of that, actually, till you were just speaking about it. And it's like, oh, my God, yes, that's what I used to say. And I used to look when I was a kid, you know, what year will it be when I'm 33? And um, and then, of course, you know, I got married, what came to the Bahamas, forgot all about everything <laughs> and uh, then had this awakening. And, yeah, I was 33 years old. And um, it's very interesting, you know, and, and with many people, if, especially those who had some sort of shift of consciousness or a near death experience or whatever, they often report the same thing or similar thing. You know, they'll have signs or they'll have messages Um, You know, even people who have near-death experiences will often get a sense that something's going to happen um, prior to the event. Um, And, yeah, yeah, if you're paying attention or if you've kind of been used to listening to your own sort of intuitive messages and guidance, then these things, you know, are often given to us sort of to prepare us in a way, I guess. I remember when I was uh, 22, when I was 22 years old, and I went to see a psychic, and the psychic couldn't see past 36. It's like, uh, 36, I can't see anything happening past 36. I don't know if it's a death or anything. I hope it's not a death, but I can't see anything past 36. And then I turned 36 years old, and that's when I had my first spiritual awakening. Ah, (laughs) very interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yes, well, yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, and they again, the yogi say it's, all of this is preordained. These shifts or awakenings or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's all right there. It's all right there. It? Yeah, you just have to let go and just let it happen because you're not in control. The ego's not in control. So just sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah. Whatever happens, let it be okay. Exactly. And, and you know, that what I've found is the more I've let go and let go and let go and let go, the easier it is and the more fun life is, actually. You know, I can I just laugh about things so much and um, just take everything lightly. It takes yeah. a lot. It takes a lot for, to, for me to kind of get upset. And even if I get upset, it doesn't last more than, you know, a few hours. Yeah. Um, and even when you're upset, what is watching you get upset? And, it, and it's entertaining from that standpoint as you watch yourself get upset. And it's like, wow. And yes. then you don't even take that seriously. And then it will, it comes and it goes and you move on to the next thing. Yes. Yeah, life continues. Yeah, you know, and I've got a great story uh, with respect to that. Um, A few weeks ago, my husband and I, we had to um, apply, uh, had to reapply for our our U.S. visa. And uh, so anyway, we went, you know, had the interview and all of that. And uh, we were coming back home and we turn into, you know, where our cars, we got two cars. One is our backup car and one is the one that we drive most of the time. So anyway, we pull into where we usually park. And I looked and I said, Tony, the car's gone. He said, what? I said, yeah, you know, our backup car, which was a Nissan Tida, was parked right there and it's gone. He said, are you sure? I said, yes, I am. So anyway, we, he parked. I got out. I just kind of walked around the, you know, the, the area to see. <laughs> but I knew um, it had gone. So anyway, we realized that it had disappeared. It had been stolen. And so we did what we had to do. You know, we went down to the police station. We we reported it. We gave them all the details and, you know, license plate number and the whole thing. And, um, you know, they're very nice. They're very helpful and so on. <laughs> so um, we came, this is about a month ago, I think. So anyway, we came out of the police station and um, I said to Tony, how do how you feel about it? And he said, well, not much of anything. He said, you? I said, nothing at all it doesn't have any effect it hasn't impinged it doesn't uh, i don't think we'll see it again i think they probably stole it to um to pick the piece you know because parts in the bahamas are very 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 expensive and they probably stole it for parts and i doubt we'll ever see it again and good luck to whoever's taken it you know? <laughs> enjoy <laughs> so uh, 
so anyway, we, uh, you know, and I, I went and I did my due diligence. Oh, I went and told the neighbours, and you know, I said, look, just make sure the car, the car's locked. You lock your car, and you've got no valuables and so on and so forth. They were so shocked because we really, uh, it's you know, we don't get thefts like that on Paradise yeah. Island, you know, and um, but I, but I just, and I, I had locked the car. It wasn't that I was, you know, I'd left it open or anything like that, but. Um, I just said, wow, this is a really uh, fantastic gift because it really clearly made me see that I don't react. You know, normally I would have probably pre awake well, I freaked out, yeah. I didn't freak. blame you if you did, but you, you didn't go through that. It didn't hit your threshold. No. So, um, so these are the kinds of things that happen. I'm just showing that as an anecdote so people kind of understand what, what that can look like. Yeah, softening um, the ego. Yeah, because the, the, the things that can usually trigger, and I'm not saying there are no trigger points, there still are some that come up and I'll go, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, human. yeah. But, um, but, but what happens as well, post egoic or ego death is that when something is triggered like not speak from my experience when something is triggered what i'll do is i'll look at what is underneath and what is the real kind of um anger or irritation that is underneath and is kind of triggering this this response um and that can be very helpful you know yeah also a great way a great exercise um it's a great way for the universe to even point it out. So here's Thanks. another thing that we can work on here. All right. You see that thing that came up there? That. All right. And once you and once you're able to um become aware of that, and then we'll remind you of another one. And another one. It's a, it's amazing. It, the universe will do whatever it has to do for you to uh kind of clear away or purify those different uh, aspects of yourself or of the of the the false self for whatever reason you know what I mean? exactly it means that the car has to be stolen for that to happen then the car has to be stolen for that to happen just because you, you wouldn't be able to recognize it otherwise so exactly. that's just, yeah that's very interesting that's amazing and in this case the car being gone it looks like from what i'm hearing is that part of the self of that was taken care of you already dealt with that so then when you're actually put to the actual test die oh, i passed the test i'm good I, I've, I've dealt with that. <laughs> yes. Give me something more. Give me something stronger. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, and this is this is the story for everybody. Actually, this is what happens, right? We are gifted with these opportunities to see where we're stuck. See where, yeah, see where you're at. See where you're stuck. Where you're at, or even just to forgive yourself and say, "Hey, it's it's okay." All right. Yeah. Sometimes we're hard yeah. on ourselves, especially as spiritual. Spiritual um, beings, we can be hard on ourselves sometimes when you don't pass a test. <laughs> yes. like, you know, it's okay. Okay, it's now that you, you've acknowledged it, you realize that it's there. That will be the next thing that you bring up in your in your next meditation or or in, as you're doing self inquiry. So it's um that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have to change the perspective that when these things are happening, they're not curses. They're just more gifts. Yeah, I mean another another one I can share since we're on anecdotes, and I think that you it's useful for the viewers, right? So, oh, so yeah. that can relate. But um, I had I went through a, two or three years ago. I had some online um, intuitive art courses, which I really loved, and I loved doing them. They were a lot of fun, and I have was. So were you using, them or were you a student in these uh, It was on, on I was teaching. Yeah, you're online. Teaching, okay. Yeah, into like intuitive art, using art to connect in with the self and to ask questions and so on and so forth. So, you know, there 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 were a lot of fun, and I had a great um, platform called Coursecraft, which was great. It was easy to use. It was affordable. It was fantastic. So anyway, I was. It was a lovely day. I was outside. I had my tripod set up and my you know my iPad, and, my, and I was good to go to start recording, and I recorded. Um, it was lesson three, I think. So I'd taken the canvas and I was showing the develop, developmental phases and I was on number three. And so I was showing that, that you know, the kind of third part of how to do it and add color and texture and lines and so forth and play and, you know, include some inquiry. And I, you know, recorded it. It was, turned out great. Mm. And when I um, 
you know, went to check on the recording, it started to play and then it just like <laughs> crashed. Uh. And then and then when I went back in, I could not locate the recording anywhere. It just had completely disappeared. It made no sense. Mm. Because I'd seen it in the photo files, and then mm. when I tried to locate it, it was absolutely completely gone. And I'd I'd spent forty five minutes to an hour, and um, and the thing is, to be able to do it again, I would have had to start from step one again mm. in the yeah. painting process before I could get to hour three. <laughs> So anyway, uh, my my husband Tony came out. And he said, "How'd it go?" Because I told him, you know, don't come out, don't <laughs> too much noise. I'm outside and I'm recording. So when he knew it was safe to come out, he came out. He said, "So how'd it go? How's it look? Can I see?" I said, "I'd love to show you, but it's disappeared." <laughs> so I just sat there laughing. I mean, what can you do? I was just laughing. I was like, yeah. "Okay, we yeah. have to start all of that again." But and then, you know, at the time I was reflecting and thinking post awake, I mean, pre awakening, yeah. I probably would have been just going ballistic and been really upset and, you know, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. And this, with, on this occasion, I just laughed. I mean, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do, right? Jeez. Did you end up starting it again eventually? Yes. Yes, I did oh, because gosh. I was I was three less. I I just said okay, I'll do it again and yeah. I'll I'll figure it out. And I did, and it was yeah. fun. And um, it was uh, it was actually painting the goddess, and I've got you know one of the examples there. Um, right here, okay. Family. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah. So anyway, it it just is, you know, it, this is this is how it is, right? That's the story. Uh, and all we have to do is just uh, continue being that character in the story, but realizing, coming to the realization that I am not the character. Or another way of looking at the character is a manifestation of me. Yes. Right? Or an expression. It's, in a, it's a small expression of the infinite. A small, yeah. yeah. It depends how you look at it. And from another standpoint, it could be a big expression of the infinite. Yeah. <laughs> it depends how you look at it. Yeah, they're yes. all yeah, yeah. part of that thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So all of these, all of these little kind of anecdotes. I'm sure you've got yours too, right? Where something happens and then you realize, oh my god, that's happened. It used to trigger me, and I used to get really upset. And now nothing's. Yeah. You no, know, I'm not phased by it. That's like that's like that for me too. And there are other things there where because I'm a very passionate person. So there are other things where um, I'm outspoken. I may raise my voice. And as I'm doing it, I, I realize what I'm doing and I'm watching myself do it. So sometimes people will say, oh, my gosh, you really got angry there. I'm like, I wasn't angry at all. <laughs> I was acting the, the, the part of anger. But I wasn't actually angry. I'm just playing. I'm just playing the part. Uh, it's, it's a weird it's a weird thing to go through. Uh, yeah. in some cases, depending on what it is, because there's things I'll be outspoken about. Just say if it's something like racism or something like that, I may be very outspoken about that. But I realize as I'm going through that, I'm just playing the story. I don't identify myself as anything. These are things, these are the parts that I'm playing. Uh, even if it means um, playing the role of me being very passionate, being outspoken in the moment when something doesn't go our way. Um, but yeah, but as I'm going through it, I'm actually looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, this is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like, you know, when you're teaching high school, you know, that's my professional background but many 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 times i'd have to stand in front of a class and feign being angry and annoyed and stern and you know to yeah, get an effect to be stern to get that yeah oh, that yes to get the discipline kind of to um and and I, oftentimes i'd feel like you know <laughs> i was just playing this <laughs> part <laughs> and and the students would be like that yeah. you know trying to behave and i'd just be laughing because it, it was like yeah, I get the same thing as well because I also work in the in the school system as well, and um, and sometimes I I have to do that to to get someone's attention, get the kids' attention, get them to behave, or stop, or even stop trashing the place. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got to do that, and as I'm doing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I I get the opportunity to act because <laughs> I don't feel that at all. I just mm -hmm. see what I have to do in the moment. Yeah. Yes, and especially, especially if you've been doing it. 
yeah and especially if you've been doing doing it for some time you know it's like how it's like and you realize that this thing really is a play because there is a difference between you hear a lot of people say that it's a play but they're going mm -hmm. by the belief system because some people follow advice of Vedanta, follow non-duality but they're not mm -hmm. actually there yet but they are believers of of the of, of the of the of the the concept and you hear people say it but it's different when you actually have integrated that into your very being and when you say that this is really a play that you really mean that this is a play and i'm just an actor in it um yeah. with everything yeah. that's going on as opposed to it just being a belief system um so one can have can have an understanding of that from an intellectual standpoint or another person can have a full understanding of that from a direct experience and is like no i really am just a character in this play this play that's manifested from the self, the true self, the ultimate self of who I actually am, the ground of all being, um, cosmic consciousness, Christ consciousness, Buddha nature, all this stuff is coming out of this this thing, and 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 it will ever it will forever be that way. And I'm just in it as a particular individual character is in it for the ride. Yeah, and you know the the, the you know if you go into YouTube, there's a lot of uh, Advaita. Or oh. non-duality teachers, there's, there's many, 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 many. But you know, and I've watched a few of them. But one of the kind of the hallmarks for me is there's obviously there's a resonance. You can feel the shakti or the energy of one who is fully immersed, and um, yeah, I, I want to say fully identified, but that's the wrong term. <laughs> but let's say fully present as a self is fully these. Present, yeah, fully present as a self. There's also joy. There's this underlying joy and lightness of being that comes out and comes across. So if someone is presenting as a non-duality teacher and he or she is very intellectual and very serious and very sounds very learned and can quote, you know, whatever. <laughs> For me, I, I just don't even pay attention. It's a it's a red flag because there's joy, there's joy that underlies and permeates one who has recognized his or her true identity. And it's palpable. There's a transmission that is inherent within each and every word. And, and it's felt, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when it's just intellectualized and it's just quoted from other people, teachers or beings or whatever this this it just feels dry it mm -hmm. feels really dry and even then even that is needed some people may have to hear that uh from the intellectual standpoint before they're able to cross that 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 point uh so even though i hear it and i and i and i say to myself that person seems to be more of a scholar than an actual person of direct experience um, but I know there are some people they they may resonate with that in in that time and space. Um, but hopefully they can get over that hump and realize that this is not an intellectual thing. Mm -hmm. We're talking about something that can't even be spoken about. And it goes right back down to what you're saying that you can feel that thing when someone is speaking about it, even if they're not speaking about it, there's this underlying thing that you can feel. Yes, that thing that it's beyond words, but you feel it. You feel it, and you know when someone is 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 um, has integrated that into their being and is speaking from a direct experience. Um, but again, you have people who um, who are sharing knowledge because they're it's coming from the book, and I have no problems with that as long as they're not saying uh, this is my experience. It's like mm, I don't think it is. <laughs> you know, just be honest in what you're doing. Be authentic. Be honest in what you're doing. If it's coming from out of a book, just say that it is. Be yeah. Honest. <laughs> yes because, you know? yeah yeah you know what i always say is your state speaks for itself yeah yeah and there's definitely a transmission there's a a quality of resonance that is there when it's authentic and um there's an ease in the flow as well that is apparent good one you said there ease in the flow yeah yeah and you know yeah. when something just flows, it just flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing um, inauthentic about that. Yeah, and for me, there's a lot of laughter. So I, you know what? <laughs> yeah, it's the best. It's the best.
So um, I, I've completely lost track of the time, but uh, is there anything you want to kind of share before we wrap things up today? Mm. Well, we were talking about ego, ego death, all of that. Um, I would say that, you know, the ego is, uh, it's a, that in itself is an interesting topic. Um, and that can go on for hours in regards to the ego, this stripping away of the ego, um, the egoic properties of the ego. Um, can a person um, still be egoic after an awakening? Um, the list goes on of all the different things of, of ego. Uh, at the end of the day, can one recognize their true self that is beyond all ego? Can one recognize the true self that is beyond your ego and beyond everyone else's ego and also recognize the fact that all ego is a manifestation of that same source and it's part and everything happens as it is. It's, it's a perfect design, perfect as it is. Nothing you can change about it, no matter how you think about it. It is what it is, as it is, for whatever reason. And it includes the idea of having an ego, trying to get rid of the ego, um, trying to integrate um, after whatever happens after ego death. All that stuff is all part of the, the grand design, the grand action of our true self, the ultimate self, grand of all being, Brahman, God, Jehovah, Allah, whatever name you come up with. <laughs> name doesn't even matter here. Um, and just the idea of ego, when you can look at ego from a, from a grand standpoint, even the ego itself, no matter how disturbing that thing could be, because it's, it's a double-edged sword, everyone knows. Ego is like a blessing and a curse, right? But either way, when you see it from the from the standpoint of the actor who's playing the character, it's just it's just extraordinary. It's it's amusing. It's all those things. And from my ego standpoint, this when I, in this case I'm talking about my sense of, my sense of self, I still like to analyze it. I still like to study it, just so that I can have those conversations with people for 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 conversation's sake. Um, and there's all and there's also. Uh, was I was going to say um, the 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 development of ego because one can say is there such thing as the development of ego and ego death and the answer to that is well yes because now if we're talking psychologically there's psychological stages of, of of growth and change and when it comes to psychological stages of growth and change you need ego development you want to have a developed ego so that you don't have a fragile ego you don't have a broken ego you don't have a uh, what they call the wounded duck. You don't want those things. Um, you want to have a developed ego as much as you can so that you can function in the world. Yet at the same time, um, not being attached to that developed ego and be able to let it go at any time so that you can recognize your true self. And that true self, we all are. Everything is. Everything is and shall be. And uh, to be able to let go of that developed ego or fragile ego, or broken ego, doesn't matter. Can we recognize our true self? And if you can recognize that, everything's, for me, everything's complete. Everything is absolute. And everything is as it is, even even that broken ego itself, which can be prepared within, it can be uh, repaired within the, within the, the stages of, of development. Um, so you want to get that ego from archaic all the way up to super integral. Uh, as much as you can as a, as an individual, as a human being. But even then, beyond all that is the ground of all being um, who allows all this stuff to happen as it is. So whatever choice you make, you're not making that choice, per se. <laughs> That's already been set in stone, and it is what it is, and it happens as it happens, and we, we get to watch the unfolding of that. Yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, um, Morgan, do you want to just, before we close off, do you want to share with people where they can find you if oh, they yeah. want to check out? Um, if you, uh, Linktree, if you, Linktree, um, what's the actual thing? Linktree, Morgan O'Smith, whatever that thing is, Morgan O'Smith, you'll find me. People will find all this stuff there. They'll even find this podcast interview or uh, discussion. All of that is there. Um, I'm in the process of um, uh, developing, building um, an organization. So it's actually up and running. Um, and uh, we're working on, cur currently working on an app, uh, a personal development app, uh, which we got to showcase that at Collision Conference last week uh, between the 20th 
between the 17th and the 20th. Um, so we're seeking money right now so that we can further develop the app. Uh, so that's part of, um, that, that's associated with uh, my organization, which is called KMOR, Center for Innovative Development. So that's in the process right now. Um, people can even go there right now if they want to. There's some stuff there at www.kmor, which is K-E-M-O-R, Center, Center spelled the Canadian way, uh, C-E-N-T-R-E dot org. So people can go there. That's all there. My energy meditation stuff will be going over to Kmore, um, Kmore Center eventually, but people can also still find that on my independent site. Uh, if you go in the link tree, all that stuff is there as well. Also, I have a book out, which has been out for, gosh, how long now? Way over a year now, uh, Bodhi in the Brain. And Bodhi in, in the Brain is pretty much a book about the same meditation, Unity Meditation, which I developed back in 2010, in 2010. And uh, it's been used with uh, different people around the world, uh, with people getting incredible results from energy. Um, other than that, if you go to my link tree, all that stuff is there and people can find all that. People can contact me directly if they want to and so on and so on and so on. I'm always available. I'm here. Try to make time as much as I can. Now, I'll have all the um, information in the show notes anyway so that people can just click and go. Yeah, they can click and go. Excellent. You know, so that is good if they want to, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so all much. right. Well, yes. It, as Martin, always. Yeah. You're such thank a beautiful you. soul and your smile, and I can see it in your eyes, the grace and everything. And it's just always good just to just look at you. Oh, likewise. Thank you so much, Morgan. This has been really great. And I think it's useful to have these kinds of discussions, especially for seekers, you know, who. Um, Even to seeking. get different perspectives, because um, yeah. you know, people have different ways of looking at it, different opinions and all that. And sometimes the seeker just want to hear a different perspective. And it's like, here it is. And so I, I thank you for even having this up and the dedication the commitment that you made to make this happen for so many people. Because the amount of people you must have met now who are giving their stories or are giving advice and, and, and the list goes on is all that is, it takes a lot of work to do that. And you find time in your day. And I know what how hard it is to be a teacher. And yes. Itself, you still make time to do that. So I commend you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for your work, too. Oh, thank what you. Doing is making a difference. It's really needed in the world today. So thank you so much. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. My thank pleasure. You. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. As always, we really appreciate you watching this episode. And if you enjoyed this content, then share it, let people know. And if you haven't already subscribed, you know what to do. So take it easy, be well, and bye for now.